Welcome to another episode of Mad Science. We are here at Austin Middle School today. I am Mr. Seeley, one of the eighth grade science teachers, and I have with me... Marcus Orozco. And... <laughs> Mercedes Lopez. All right. Today, we are going to make a soap souffle. And what we have here is ivory soap. It is known as the soap that floats. And a bar of dial soap. So first off, what we're going to do is toss these in the water and see if they actually float. So I'm going to you if you want to open that one up. Marcus, you open up the dial soap for us. All right, Mercedes, put your soap in the water, see what happens. Is it floating? Yes. Yes. What about you? Dial? Mercedes, did that float? Nope. We're down to the bottom. Yep. Okay. Marcus, why do you think the ivory soap floats? I think it has an air pocket in it. You think it has an air pocket in it? Why don't you try to break one of those open and see if you got it? No. Any air pocket in there? There's not air pocket. No? Okay. Mercedes, why do you think it floats? I think it's less dense than water. You think it's less dense than water? Mm -hmm. Do you know the density of water? One. One. That's correct. So, in order to calculate this density, we're going to use the formula density equals mass divided by volume. And we're going to calculate the mass with Marcus. And then Mercedes is going to use the displacement method to calculate the volume of it. So Marcus, go ahead. You've got ivory there. What do you got? 32. 32? 32. 32.0. All right, let's go with the dial soap. Look good? 39.1. The expert says 39.1. 39.1. Okay, Mercedes, now get us the displaced volume, or the volume, this one's the ivory soap. Get drop that under the ivory container. What are we starting with? 400 milliliters? Yep. Okay. And here's the dial soap, also at 400 milliliters. 445. 45? Yep. All right. And what about the ivory? 32. 32. Quick calculation. Mercedes, you told us the density of water was one. Mm -hmm. Well, ivory soap has the exact same density. So, technically, you know, it might float, but then we have dial soap, which sank, and its density is supposed to be less than water. So there's got to be another reason why these float. Any more, more, any more ideas? Nope. Nope. Actually, a gentleman who was making the ivory soap left the stirring paddle on too long. He flipped on the switch and started stirring the soap batter, and he went to lunch and left it on. And so when he came back, he noticed that a whole bunch of air had been introduced, almost like it was whipped soap. So, on to our soap souffle demonstration. So Marcus, let me ask you this. What happens to air as it gets heated up? It expands. It expands, that's right. Mercedes, why does it expand? It gets... Um, because the air inside of it gets all excited and... Okay, so the particles. particles start moving around, start bumping into each other. Mm -hmm. So all we're going to do is we're going to take a bar of this ivory soap, throw it in the microwave and see if we can't make this soap souffle. While we're doing this, any guesses on what you think is going to happen? We start off with this size. What size do you think we're going to get at? Right here. Bigger? What's yeah. it going to look like? Whipped cream. Whipped cream? What do you think it's going to look like? A cloud. A big cloud? Okay. Before we put this in the microwave, we've got to have safety first. So. Goggles on. Piece of ivory soap in the container. I'm gonna set it for two minutes and let her cook. So, after a minute and ten seconds, our bar of soap is now a soap souffle. Light and fluffy cloud-like whipped cream. So here is your soap souffle. 